welcome to the lighter side of the dark side. It's your weekly freak show here on Renegade Radio, Steel Waves Radio, iHeart Radio, uh, uh, as well as we 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 got some we got some new podcasts. Podcast Addict has has a show now. Geo Savan, which I know is a big Indian uh, podcasting uh, channel, and Apple, Spotify, Sticker, all your regulars. It's the Dark Mark Show. I'm Dark Mark, the Goth comedian, and if you're watching this on YouTube, because we're on there too, she's Bach. You can see her now. Oh. It's the first time in the month. It's Hannah Bach. Hi, guys. Well, you've been on the show, but you haven't shown everybody how beautiful you are. I, I haven't. You know, I had surgery on my nose, and I was finally healing because it takes forever. So. You had surgery on your nose? You got a nose job? No, I wish. I had a tumor on the tip of my nose. They had a oh, cut okay. out. And, ooh, that was a fun healing process. Yeah, no, don't say that. You wish. <laughs> Get a schnoz like this and see what see see how you see how you do. I want a nose job. I want one of the ones that go like that. No, you don't. Oh no 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 no! Don't don't get a Miss Piggy nose job, please. Don't don't <laughs> don't. Uh, but uh, you know, as I was saying, you know, last week how we had uh, our friend Aiden Park, and he had a very unusual story. Lots of ups and downs and twists and turns, and uh, it was. And now he's written a book. The Which Art of Yay. So I guess this week is Literary Month. Because mm, yes. today we have a world-class figure skater turned adult film director, turned adult film star, turned swinger lifestyle coach, and also she's uh, been a, uh, she taught children, she's, uh, she's a fitness, uh, fitness guru, she's got all sorts of things, uh, apparently a busty football player, all sorts of things going on. I don't even know where to start. It's Carl and Jewel. Hi. Hi. I was I well, say hi so everybody can see you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you might want to talk a little louder. I don't know if it's cat it's, it's picking you up. Okay, see if you can catch me now. Uh, Is that better? Ah, look at that. Look at that uh, there you go. <laughs> what were you gonna say, Hannah? Um, I would like to start with the ice skating because when okay. I was a girl, I was obsessed with Oksana Bayul and my mom wouldn't give me skating lessons, so my cousin bought me a pair. And I used to go around the wood floors with them on and get in trouble and just pretend like people sell cows and fall down. <laughs> Love to hear about that. <laughs> well, put a bookmark in that. We're going to talk about that in a second. Okay. You know, Hannah, we got to do our sponsors first. Oh, yes. Real we did. quick, get it out of the way. Okay. I know, I, you got to pay the bills. <laughs> Audible. Now, your book is not Audible, but I'm sure it will be soon, right, Coraline? Correct. It's not Audible yet. But, uh, but there are all sorts of great books on Audible. You get a free book. A free Audible original or two free Audible originals or two free books. You get whatever your book you want. They've got everything. And the Audible originals, uh, everybody's going crazy for the new uh, Audible uh, Sandman. Mm -hmm. they, have a, uh, they have an Audible version of the Sandman comic narrated by Neil Gaiman. James McAvoy plays Dream. People are going crazy. There's also versions of Alien, Alien Free, and all sorts of great sci-fi stuff on there. Kate McKinnon has a thing. Whatever you want. And they have books for everything from Shakespeare to smut. So go to audibletrial.com forward slash DMS for the Dark Mark Show. Once again, audibletrial.com forward slash DMS. And you will get one free book, one free Audible Originals, or two free books or two free Audible Originals and a third day trial for free. And you can cancel the next day still keep the books. Hannah, I, I know that you were disappointed that we're not talking figure skating right off the bat. But right. I did want to say, since you are everybody's favorite vegan heavy metal DJ, I went to Dumi's Home Cooking last week. Okay? I you did. I saw your food. Carla, you live in Los Angeles, don't you? Uh, close. Close to LA. Okay. Are you a vegan, by chance? No. No. I got to have my steak. Well, no. But uh, let me tell you something. And, and, and how dare you say that in front of Hannah. But, I know. Uh, sorry, no. Hannah. Let me tell you something, Carla. I, even though you're a big steak lover, I could take you to do some cooking. You would love it. Do oh, some cooking. Yeah, 1253 Line Street, right in the corner of Fountain Line. You know what I had last week? I had the new chicken cordon bleu sandwich. Yes, you did. And okay. it was huge and it was delicious. I don't know. The guy's a genius. I don't know how he does it. Now, I'll be honest. The ham didn't look like ham, but it tasted like ham. The chicken looked exactly like bigger than a Popeye's chicken breast. And the texture, the taste, and put the sauce on there. Delicious. Mm -hmm. They have that pasta again. They've got chicken Alfredo pasta, chicken Parmesan with pasta. Uh, they've got everything. 
I don't know how they do it. They've got uh, Mexican food. They've got uh, mm. regular uh, food. Get the fun fries. There's and, a yeah, they, yeah, they've got. They, they, you, we'll, we'll, we'll have to go soon, Hannah, because they've kind of uh, redone the menu. We do. And what's so wonderful about Doomies, um, their portions are just out of this world. I mean, you get what you pay for. They're not oh. going to overcharge you for some like dinky little plate. And that's, that's appreciated, especially now that COVID's here and a lot of us are like scraping by. Oh, trust me. I could, uh, I barely finished it and I, I didn't eat till like the, the next afternoon. I was so full. Oh, yeah, that's the best cheap meal ever for me. <laughs> Doomies Home Cooking. 1253 Vine Street. There's another, another restaurant in Culver City, one in Toronto, Canada. Uh, Coraline, what is your favorite vibrator? Uh, the NU Essential. Have you heard of it? I have not. I haven't. Hannah, do you I know this one? It in here. It's like this big. It's a little, uh, comes in different colors. It's on Amazon. It's actually really cheap. It's like $30. And uh -huh. it's the Toro vibrator. Well, you know what? They, 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 probably the place to get it would be Hustler Hollywood. So if you go to hustlerhollywood.com, yeah. And use our code that will be in the text of this episode on podcast catchers and as well as YouTube. And we'll, we'll post it on social media at Dark March Show. You get 20% off anything on Hustler Hollywood and a free gift, a free naughty gift. So get that vibrator, any vibrator, lingerie. Uh, they got all sorts of stuff, butt plugs, whatever you want. Dick pills. <laughs> right, Hannah? Yeah, and their shoes are out of this world. Well, that's right. They have nice shoes. Because, mm. you know, uh, Corlin got the three and a half stars on the Wiki Feet X. <laughs> Are you aware of that, Carlin? I am. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if that's high or low. I know. It was, it was I think good. it's low. I think it's the ice skater feet. Yeah. <laughs> you got, are your feet kind of calloused? Is that what's going on? They're just smushed. They're so tiny. They're like a size five, four and a half. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Guys like that. The big Fred Flintstone feet. They've been lived in, lived in ice skate since I was three years old. So. <laughs> yeah. We're almost to the ice skating, Hannah. Uh, <laughs> we also are sponsored by Spy Associates. You get 20% off any order of two, over $249. All sorts of spy equipment, uh, see, you know, uh, GPS trackers, bug detectors, uh, uh, cameras and smoke detectors, all sorts of stuff. And one more, we got so many sponsors, I can't tell you. Hey, hey that's good. <laughs> Ray's Energy Drinks, my favorites. This is the best energy drink. If you're going to drink energy drinks, you want to wake up, this is the one to do it. Raise energy drinks. You can't get it at 7-Eleven. You can't get it in a supermarket. They sell it at GNCs. They sell it at gyms because it does have electrolytes and other things to help you work out. And uh, it's actually shining the way I'm set, holding it. This is a Galaxy Burst flavor. It's uh, really good. I just got a case of this uh, three weeks ago. Almost done with it. I just ordered Baja Lime, which tastes like Baja Blast and Taco Bell. And they also have Voodoo flavor. That's like fruit punch. This is like a Fruity Pebbles, Fruit Loops sort of flavor. <laughs> What is your favorite? Because I know you've tried so, them. In. I haven't tried them all, but so far, I like the Galaxy Burst. Oh, better but, than the like, Sour Patch Kids one? Well, the food was good. Mm -hmm. I, actually, you know, it, 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 this is, this, it, like I say, it's two different types of fruity flavors. Mm -hmm. like fruit Punch, and this is kind of like even sweeter, like Fruit Loops. I'll tell you what's surprisingly good is the Sour Gummy ones. I was That's not looking forward to that. <laughs> it was good. It was really, yeah. really good. It wasn't too sour. I, I was regretting that. It's so, crazy to do today because I, since going vegan, I don't, and I, I'm very careful with what I put on my body. I found a vegan pre-workout that has a lot of amazing stuff in it, but it's Skittles flavored. Yeah. And it's good. So if anybody so, else, you know. This is kind of Skittles flavored, actually. And yeah, zero calories. Have. Zero carbs, zero cramps. <laughs> Ice skate away. Go ahead, Anna. Oh, I was going to say, if there's any um, anybody out there in the vegan market, especially supplements, send them our way. I'd be love. I would love to try them and review them on our show. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now you, you Corlin, you were a figure skater. Well, first off, let's go back beyond that, and Hannah, we'll, we will get to the figure skating in just a moment. Okay. <laughs> and everybody else watching and listening. We're going to get to the sex and all the other stuff, too. You were born in South Africa. That's good. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I, you really need to talk louder, Carlin, because okay. the way the Zoom thing is, it has to pick you up. So Okay, That's you got good. me now. Okay. Yes, born That's in okay. South Africa. Now, I have observed, and I've met a lot of women from South Africa, black and white. Mm -hmm. 
every woman I've ever met in South Africa is astonishingly beautiful. I well, agree. They are. I don't know what happened to me, but they are. Oh, stop <laughs> it. I'm putting you in this. <laughs> Thank you. No, yeah, it's um, it's a very, it, I think it's because it's, um, it's a country that's got so many different diverse uh, cultures that come from all over. You know, you've got, it's not just South Africa. You've got people that are coming and immigrating from Poland and um, Lithuania and then growing up in South Africa. It's very European mixed. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. I just, it's just so weird. Everybody, every time I, I, I run into somebody that's got the strange accent and they're like, no, I'm not from Australia. I'm from South Africa. I'm like, wow. And they're usually very tall and they're usually just beautiful. And, and you are no exception. And you grew up Jewish in South Africa, which is, a, I didn't know that was a thing either. Nope, yes. I was uh, born Jewish, born in South Africa. I was actually born in a nun's convent. Oh, and, wow. Um, and I'm Jewish. And uh, we immigrated to America when I was three years old. How did you get born in a convent being Jewish? How did that work out? I asked my mom and she said that was the safest place to have a baby. Mm -hmm. like, uh, <laughs> maybe that's why I'm not religious. It's her fault. Yeah, well, because... Because the stereotype, obviously, in South Africa is, and you know, and it's born out from uh, like really blonde and blue-eyed, or or like really like was a snipe stark, and and you're neither. So, but you do have those those piercing blue eyes, though. Yeah, yeah. So, right. and there's actually a lot of brunettes in South Africa. Yeah, I, well, I'm, and, yeah, really good go friend of South Africa, and um, he's blonde hair, blue eyes, and he has the sexiest accent ever. I know. I wish I had the accent. Yeah. We should drag him on the show one of these days. <laughs> oh, please. We got so many people coming up for October. We can we can barely hold we can barely hold it together for that. Um, and by the way, after the show, I'm gonna tell you, Hannah, we might have a, a well, it's not exactly an A-lister, but somebody you have heard of in a movie you have seen that's a part of a big franchise. That's uh, we'll see what happens. We're gonna be doing two shows every week in in in, in October, and we still not gonna fit all the creepy friends I have. So, so since it's quarantine and it's going to be October, I say we wear Halloween costumes for our shows. Well, we're going to do that uh, okay. well, <laughs> I, I, on the Halloween show, but uh, we, we got a lot of stuff. We got Corlin's here. So when did you start figure skating, Corlin? When did that start? Uh, we moved to America when I was about three years old, and I think that I started about four. Um, from what I remember, they took my father took me skating, and that was it. That was kind of my thing forever. I didn't do birthday presents. We didn't do holiday presents. It was pretty much like, do you still like to ice skate? Yes, I do. Okay, here's your skates or here's your competition dress or something like that. So, so they were kind of stage parents. They were not stage parents at all, actually. That's the interesting part. Um, from what, you know, I was young, but I wanted to do it. So I wanted to compete. I wanted to do pair skating. I wanted to go and live at the Olympic Training Center. And so it was a trade-off. It was like, okay, well, if you want to do this, then you have to work and buy your own car or stuff like that. They never pushed me. In fact, um, my mom would put me in a taxi cab at 5 a.m. every single morning. I would sleep in my ice skating clothes, wake up, eat my cereal, go outside and take the same taxi driver to the rink and then walk to school from there. How old were you? At that age, I was probably, by then I was probably 11 or 12, I would say seventh grade. So I would go um, skate, walk to school, walk back to the ice rink, skate, do ballet. Um, our ice rink was at a mall. So we would do our homework there. It was at a food court. Um, and we would, we would buy jelly beans and try to sell them to people in the mall so we could... <laughs> I just have all these memories. Buy more, buy more candy because I wasn't allowed to have junk food at home. So yeah, yeah. Do you remember your favorite outfit? Like, what's your favorite outfit to ice skate in? Oh gosh, I had so many. I actually started to teach myself how to sew. So I took sewing lessons and I started to make my own dresses. And then later on, I actually started to coach ice skating students and make their dresses. Oh, that's awesome. Mm. What what dress would you make, Hannah? I know she's wearing um, a tutu now, but I know she looks so pretty in the white. So I do something like white, kind of like a, like an angel, kind of. You know? uh, that would be pretty. <laughs> Anna, show, say, say something and stand up and show everybody your tutu. Huh? Your tutu. Oh no! Actually, it's really embarrassing. I'm so lazy and it's hot in my room. I didn't want to put the fan on. I'm actually in my underwear. 
Oh, you took off the tutu. Okay, because you were you had it on before the show. Oh. You're still not wearing pants. So stand, stand up and show everybody that you're not wearing pants. It's actually just one on my um. It was my cover for my seat. Okay. Uh, okay. So the little fur covers you have which you put on your vanity. <laughs> so you you were good enough that you actually were accepted to the Olympic Training Center. So I moved up to the Olympic Training Center. Um, I trained alongside Michelle Kwan, and um, that was when I was 16 years old. And how she be nice, or she's very nice, and her friend, her sister's really nice, and um, her her father's really nice. It was during the time with the whole Nancy Kerrigan and um, Tanya uh, Harding issue. Uh, Michelle was there. We were all watching on TV when everything happened sitting in the dorms at the ice skating training center. Did you, did, you know, did you know either of them? I did not know either of them. I knew Michelle, but not them. Yeah. And what did she say about them? Did, was she like, I'm not surprised or? No, she was never, she never really did tell us either way. Um, all we were notified back at our training center was that the uh, father notified us that Michelle was safe and she was in lockdown. And at that point, nobody knew anything. So, <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, I'll never forget seeing that. Yeah, it was crazy. It was unexpected for sure. So, so you can do all the all the, all the twirl. What was your what was the big coral and dual move? You could do. Um, I know that wasn't your name then, but uh. I was a, I was really a good spinner, and because I was little, I got into pair skating, and that's kind of how I got into uh, trying to represent South Africa in the Olympics. Was um, I went to the national pair tryouts, which were in San Francisco, and uh, there was probably close to five, 600 girls. And I think there was five guys and I got chosen. And so I moved to uh, Madison, Wisconsin. And that's really where I got with a partner. And together we went to the South African Olympic Committee and tried to you know, start getting ready to compete for them. Because I would think in South Africa, there's probably less figure skating than there is here. Yes, there, there was, they didn't have a pair skating team <laughs> at all. So that's why we had the opportunity to do that. And did you get to the Olympics or no? Uh, no, so I skated with that partner. And then in my book, I talk about some things that I experienced as a 16 year old with a 32 year old partner. Uh, we lived in a studio apartment. And so there was a couch and a Murphy bed. A coach? Uh, not a coach, but I've seen that too, but a boyfriend. <laughs> so his boyfriend. And so I ended up moving to uh, North Carolina on another skating scholarship. And um, when I was in North Carolina, that's when my, I was skating with a partner and then I was dropped and injured. I was off the ice for eight months. And that oh. took my whole career a different direction. Oh, <laughs> oh he, um, he literally uh, fucked the Olympic gold right out of you. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much because we, what, the way it goes is it goes national, it goes world tryouts, Olympic tryouts, it's in every two years. And so we missed the tryouts because I was injured and off the ice for eight months. They also didn't know if I was going to be able to handle the impact of being thrown um, and landing after that injury. Right. Um, so I mean, I ended up doing other things. I ended up um, getting a show in Germany and then I ended up ultimately moving to Sweden and coaching ice skaters in Sweden. I started a skating club in Sweden and um, things just kind of took me into a different direction which didn't ultimately at the end have anything to do with ice skating. So you were like it was like an ice capade sort of show? Uh, yes I, I compare it to like a Disneyland like performing at a Disneyland um, so we skated we did six shows a day six days a week one day off. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work yeah. Eight, eight, eight females and eight males all living in the same house together with one straight guy and everybody else was gay. <laughs> and I really liked the everybody else, just not the straight guy. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> right, right? They're always... I was going to say, the straight guy had, 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 had it all, but no, I guess... Not. Well, he was married. He was from South Africa, actually. Um, you would think we would have gotten along, but no. So, uh, Hannah, can you imagine being uh, in the ice capades and Entertaining kids and skating and doing, doing well, well. But I used to fantasize about being the next Oksana Bayul because she's Russian and I'm part Russian. I was just so obsessed with her. And I got a pair of white ice skates. And that's when I used to go around my house and ruin the hardwood floors. And then my dream was to own a pair of the beige skates because I always thought they were so beautiful. And with the sparkly dress and, you know, do some rock and roll. But yeah, that was just a fantasy. <laughs> 
Uh, I hope I hope your boyfriend's listening and uh, Christmas gift Christmas coming around the corner. Anyway, so Carl, so, yeah. So what about you? have you uh, ever ice skated? Have you ever wanted to? Who me? Yeah. No, I, I've roller skated. I've never ice skated. I actually used yeah. to have a pair of blades, and uh, I should probably, you know, I, I'd say this. I, I I need to exercise to do anything. I should probably do it again. But last time I bladed, I was uh, my niece she had a birthday party, and they. Uh, Everybody else had the regular skates, and I had blades because I was used to the blades. Yeah. And but the problem was, and and Carla, you you'll you'll cringe as soon as I say this. I'm size twelve uh, foot. Okay. But they didn't have size twelve. They had size eleven and size thirteen. So I got the bigger one. Okay. And here's what happened. So I'm doing well. I start skating around really fast. I'm doing really good. And they've never skated before. So uh, my niece and nephew, they've never skated before. Uh, my sister and my mother, they hadn't skated in a long time. So everybody's still kind of feeling out. And I had been skating fairly, fairly regularly. And so I was doing pretty good. I was skating backwards. I was doing real fast. And then my ankle did this. <laughs> and I fell down. And I, I thought it was sprained. And it was, like, swollen for, like, a month. I went to the hospital to see if it was sprained or broken. And they're like, no, just lay off it, which I had been doing. And so that was four hundred dollars just to tell me nothing. So, so that was my last experience on skates. But I used to rollerblade, and I used to, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's um when I was living in Germany, we had to skate in the um, parade, and it was a rollerblading parade. And the funny thing is, I had grown up on figure skates all my life. I'd never rollerbladed. I'd roller skated. But I'd never rollerbladed. So after we did our six shows a day, I would practice in the streets outside our house so that I didn't make a fool of myself when we were when I was the one that had to do the parade. They rotated us. Right. But you would think that I would know how, but that's hard. Rollerblading's hard. No, I've had the, I've ice skated before, and you know it's it's all that's different. The the blades, the, the the roller skates with the four on the bottom, that's different. The rollerblades different. Ice skating's different. It's all different balance. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You used to rollerblade? Uh, I, you know, it's 2020. Maybe I'm. Uh, yeah. I don't see too many people rollerblading. I think they do. Okay. I have them. <laughs> Hannah, don't we rollerblades in Redondo or? Um, no, there's a lot of people on the strand actually, because now I'm bodyboarding more than ever, and you see them with their rollerblades and their um. What are those other things? They got their like skateboards, and everybody's yeah, out like, in the Yeah, yeah skateboards never go out of style, but. So you were you were trapezing about around Europe for a while, Carolyn. Yes, yeah. So, uh, so like I said, Germany was for a year, Sweden was for four years, and then came back to California. Um, I was married, and I came back to California with a one-year-old son. Yeah. Did you meet, did you meet the guy in Europe? Is that what happened? No, nope, I met him in North Carolina when I was um, on there on a skating scholarship out there. Um, I was there with him for four years. I actually got my college degree from North Carolina in theatrical production. And then he received the opportunity to move to Sweden. And that's why we went there. And then I followed ice skating stuff there. This is, this is connecting a lot of dots for me. Coming so, together. <laughs> so, he, so he got to, he got to trapeze throughout Europe because of you. Well, and because of him, I actually got to go to Sweden because of him for his job. But then I got to do, um, as soon as I was notified that we were going to go live in Sweden, that's when I reached out to all the skating clubs and um, started coaching there and starting my own, um, starting my own skating club and then working with my students. So uh, you're, you were teaching fitness and primarily children's fitness, is that right? <laughs> when, I, when I came home from Sweden, yes, I started, folk, I opened up a fitness company for children, ages three, four, and five, a mobile fitness company. Uh -huh. um, I would travel to preschools. Three, four, and five? Ages three, four, five. <laughs> what what <laughs> exercises can three, four, and five-year-olds do? They it's like a music to movement class. We work on like balancing and bean bags and jumping. You'd just be surprised how many kids can't like jump over a little hurdle, uh, walking on a balance beam, standing on one foot. So... That's what I did. I started the company in 2006, and I still have it today. Jeez, I, I, I should take your class. Be challenging <laughs> for me. But so you're teaching fitness to three, four, and five year olds. Wow. Yes. I can't eat. I, and and uh, just, so did you just have them, is this a lot of like trampoline stuff? Is that. Um, uh, I, it's music to movement. So stuff with like maracas and bean bags um, and. Uh, 
uh, hurdles, bounce beam, ladders, stuff like that. So I bring it into the daycare and I do a 30 minute music to movement class for the kids. We actually wrote our own music and developed our own curriculum and program. And uh, we even have a little frog, Frenzy the Frog, that goes to like birthday parties. I have the costume downstairs. I'm usually the frog. Okay. Yeah. Well, we don't want to mix things together. Huh? Well, I'd love to see it. <laughs> I'd love to see you do an adult movie with the, in the frog, but oh goodness, that's a, that's a whole. I want I want you to combine everything of your life with skates. I want it all. I want it all together. So skates and Frenzy the Frog in an adult movie. Okay. Yes. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. and, I, and I want to be the I want to be the star. I want to be. There you go. Don't I want. I want, I want I'm, I'm I'm brainstorming right now. I would wear like uh, I would wear like a little kid's like little outfit, like little little like uh, you know. Um, overall shorts or something like that. Gosh, gosh, gosh. Like I'm a three-year-old, I'm taking your class. And then uh, suddenly- uh, Careful, careful where you're going. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> the- For a guy outfit though, kind of like Chucky. Yeah, I'm just- Oh, uh, there you go. Yeah, I'm just brainstorming <laughs> here. Anyway, let, let, let me get up back on track and stop uh, fantasizing and, and touching myself on this <laughs> Zoom monitor. Um, so here's, now here's what happens now. Um, you start, let me know if this is correct. Okay. One day your husband comes to you and you're, uh, you're teaching a fitness class. And he says, uh, how's that pain? And you say, well, it's okay. And then he's like, you know, a lot of women sell their panties online. That's a conversation you have with your husband? Yeah, you're pretty close. Uh, he came to me during like when the, the housing crash was, I think I want to say like 2008. Oh, okay. Now it's making sense. So it's yeah. the recession. And said, yeah. And said to me, you know, why, how's your fitness company going? And I said, it's slow because people are losing their jobs and then they're pulling their kids out of daycare. And he said, well, you know, you can make extra money because girls sell their underwear online. And I thought he was crazy and I laughed at him. And then I stopped laughing and I said, how do you know that? And that's how everything in my life changed from that one. So you see, we can blame him because everything from that one comment took me the next day to go and build a website, research it, go down, buy panties, take pictures, put them online and put ads up on Craigslist, buy my juicy panties. And I sold $400 in a day. I, see, this is what I was trying to, uh, I was trying to pay him as a deadbeat, but I guess he wasn't. Um, <laughs> And, and Hannah, we'll re, uh, you know, before you start doing that, which, you know, might as well. I, I'd sell my dick out there if anybody would buy it. Uh, it goes down a, a long road. But uh, so then, so you're selling your panties and they're, and they're, doing, they're, you're, and they're doing great. Yes. Um, a lot of Japanese people or just locals uh, doing it? It's just, I, I had no idea that it was now it's even a bigger market. But at, at that time, um, you know, you could sell a pair of underwear for $30 with photos of you in them with no face and 24-hour um, turnaround and you ship them out and then people could buy like extra day wear and stuff like that. And um, that's kind of how everything progressed to them requesting pictures of my face, to them requesting videos of me in the panties. Um, and then I started a website called Paradise Panties for You. And mm -hmm. I was actually Lady Paradise. So... You have a lot of pseudonyms. Uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> I know. Do they want your socks too? I know there's a lot of folks. Now they, yeah, yeah, yeah. So socks, shoes. Now people sell everything. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so you start doing that. And then uh, how did you get into directing? What, 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 thought you, what got you into directing uh, adult movies? So I have a degree in theatrical production, as I mentioned earlier, from North Carolina. And then I was running the fitness company and then doing the panty sales. And then I ended up getting involved in the swinger lifestyle, which we'll get there, which ended well, up- We're gonna get there, don't worry about it. I got plenty of questions about that. <laughs> so the divorce, um, I was trying to figure out different ways to wait, make money. And so I found a website and um, on there, I applied for a job as a director and ultimately that ended up being a director in the porn industry up in LA. So. Okay. And you do, like you said, you do have a master's degree. Sorry? You have a master's degree, right? I just have a bachelor's. Bachelor's. Uh -huh. I was I was talking. I, uh, I last year we interviewed Ella Darling, and uh, I told her, and I, I'm, I I've said this every every adult film actress we've had since. Um, it seems to me, and there are there are exceptions, but it seems to me most adult film actresses 
and I wouldn't know this until I started really talking in depth with them, interviewing them on the show, are quite intelligent. Absolutely. I think that it takes, and in, in, in my mind, it takes a different person. You have to be strong to be in the industry that, that I'm in, in the industry that I got in, because there's so much judgment um, and there's so much misconception, which is really the reason that I decided to share my story and put everything into a book. Because for a long time, nobody knew the other side of me. You know, it was very kept secretive. And I started to realize that um, I can't help anybody if I don't share my story and I don't share my experiences, so. All right, wouldn't, wouldn't you agree, Hannah? Mm -hmm. uh, all the ones we've had this year have been uh, really, really, uh, really sharp. And yes. great storytellers. Yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I think uh, we lost her since we got off figure skating, but. Um, we lost the end of figure skating. <laughs> no, I'm still here. Okay. okay. So, uh, well, let's go. Let's get back because you were, you, like you said, you were swinging with your husband. This is before. Is this this is before you started selling your panties? After. So panties first. And then um, somebody requested that we do a video of my husband and I having sex together. Well, and how, did, how was your sex life prior to the panties selling? And it was fine. We had a good sex. We had a, we had a really good marriage and a good sex life. Everything was good. Yeah. Um, and then someone requested a video of us together, which ultimately we tried and it didn't work. It was a fail, epic fail. Um, we met a couple that we'd never met before. We met them out for dinner um, actually on our 10 year wedding anniversary. And we actually went to the hotel with them that we were married at. This is really crazy. I don't know what we were thinking. And uh, tried to film, but we were all so new at this that after like four or five bottles of wine, uh, they were videoing, they knocked over the lamp. He couldn't stay hard and it just ultimately did not work. <laughs> so, um, but after that, he approached me and said that he thought it was kind of a turn on to have somebody in the room watching us. And that's when we started to experiment in the swinger world and the lifestyle world. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I, honestly, I got to be honest with you. And, and you, maybe you can explain the appeal. I don't get it at all. But that's just me. I was just, I was on a show this week. It was a, a, a sex show. Mm -hmm. Not, this show's not a sex show, uh, but uh, we talk about sex a lot. But I was on a show that was about, uh, it was a sex therapist. And I was saying that for me, and this is only me. Uh, I, I have a problem dating more than one woman at a time. And if I'm really into a woman, I don't even have to be in love with her, but if I'm really into her, um, I'm not really interested in another woman. And, and I, I really would be weirded out somebody watching me have sex. And I think that's happened once or twice, but I didn't know until after the fact. Now, Hannah just uh, started going out with her boyfriend, so they'll probably be swinging pretty soon. But no, no, no. <laughs> What's the appeal? Tell me the appeal is swinging. So that's another thing is that so many people, um, you know, when they hear swinging, they think husband and wife having sex with another husband and wife. And that's it. They don't look at all the different realms that come into it. Um, there's the turn on with just being watched. So you and your husband or you and your partner go to a party and you just want to be watched. Nobody's allowed to touch you. It's very much a, um, you know, no touch policy asked before. Um, some people like to just watch. So they get turned on. Um, I host events now and there's couples that just come to my party, just watch, and then they go home. And then there's that aspect of the, you know, the unicorn, finding that single lady to bring into that couple's relationship or that experience of, you know, having another woman. And then there's couples where the man just wants to watch his wife with another man. He wants nothing to do with the woman. So there's so many different aspects to the word swinging or the lifestyle swinging that you really don't know maybe what your fantasy is or what your turn on is until you try it. And then you decide if you liked it or don't like it, but you have to have a strong relationship with your partner to do that. You do, you do. Otherwise, I'm okay with watching, um, and he's a little funny about things like that because he's never been to a club called Bar Sinister, which is very tame, and I was telling him about a couple of the, um, you know, shows that I've seen, and he was just like, I don't know if I'd want to watch that, you know, he's like, I just, 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 just us, I'm like, all right, all right, you know. Yeah, everybody, you know, like I said, I mean, that's, again, goes back to, you know, why I did my book and why I'm a lifestyle coach, um, and, you know, how I started my Swingers Club, which we haven't even gotten there yet, but. Getting there. Um, why I, um, so many times I've had a couple come to me with drama or an issue or a problem and I end up spending an hour at my own event helping them and realized, wait a second, this is what I should be doing. I should be helping couples, not just in swinging, but in relationships in general. 
Um, I, well, you are a lifestyle coach. You are yes, somebody that correct. coaches I, just couples or singles too? Couples and singles and singles, men and women. So, and I have, you know, all sorts of people that come to me and, you know, I think that they feel that they can really open up and trust me because they, they know now my background. You see, that's the thing. Everybody now knows, okay, she's not just, you know, just a swinger, just a porn star, whatever. Now they can see how I came to be where I'm at. And I really do. Everybody that I've uh, coached so far, I've helped them and I've kept them either mm -hmm. in the lifestyle or convinced them that it's time that they step back until they work on their solidity between their relationship before <laughs> entering something like the lifestyle. It's, uh, I, I say my, my best analogy is that um, you're playing with fire and if you don't play safely, you're going to get burned. But if you do play the game right and you do experience it right, then it's going to light the flame of your relationship. Right, right. That's true. But I, I, I've seen, I've seen a ruined relationships. Absolutely, absolutely. I've seen, I can count over, I've got eighteen thousand members in my club, and I can tell you, of a hundred of the divorced now, at least. Including at least. yourself. And myself, exactly, exactly. I went to a swingers club in Las Vegas once. Okay, and, I probably and, know where you were. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Um, it was not the green door. It was not. Uh, it, it was it, like a little house place. Yes, yeah, I know. Okay. Well, you know who, who you know who it is. Yeah, there's a couple yeah. now, but yeah. So there was there was there was a young lady that wanted to have sex with me, and she was she loved the swingers' life. So I guess she loved to go and watch. So we went there, and uh, I knew a couple people there, and like we passed a couple rooms, and they were like, well, first off, we we went, we had sex. For, for a couple hours and it was great. And, but first off, the rooms are really dimly lit. Why is that? Um, so the rooms are dimly lit to kind of, um, I think also just to create the mood. Uh, everybody again does their, their club or, you know, their events differently. Mine are dimly lit, but I put in like ambiance lighting and stuff. Um, and then every club and every um, event has their own rules. So closed door, means like, you know, they don't want to be disturbed. Open door means that they want to be watched, but that's not an invitation to jump on the bed with them. You still have to ask. Um, I run a no lock door policy. So my staff is allowed to make sure that the door is unlocked, but if the door is closed, nobody's allowed to go in there. Okay. Yeah, we were, we were, we were in a closed door room. But okay, did, did anybody come in? Huh? Did anybody come in? I, I was a little preoccupied, I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, so, so that was good. And then it was like, okay well what do we do now and she wanted to hang out we, we passed all these rooms and and you know I, I ran into a couple of people that were like in a rugby scrum on a bed that wanted us to join them and i'm like man i can't get into that and we basically just ended out in the patio with a couple of drinks and a dj and i was like it was it was weird i mean it was just it was my first experience it was just i i i just don't know if uh and it wasn't like I was getting hit on, she was getting hit on. I mean, she was getting hit on, but I wasn't. So that's, that's the other thing is that I've had, I know, I've known swinger couples, and this is the most common thing. that I know about three or four couples like this. The woman can have sex with any woman she wants, but the man can't have sex with another woman. Yeah, you see, and that's a lot of the problem too. And then um, you also have, you know, couples where, you know, maybe you find another couple and the guy's attracted to the girl, but his wife's not attracted to the man. And mm -hmm. then there's that battle of, you know, they call taking it, take, take one for the team, which I'm highly against because that'll get thrown back in your face later when yeah. she says, hey, or he says, hey, remember, I took one for the team for you. Or vice versa. That doesn't work. So again, that's, there's so many different things that play into this lifestyle, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, and, um, because the stereotype and uh... stereotype, and if you if you have to have a, such a strong connection with your partner before you even dare dabble in this world, and and I thought that I did with my husband. That was a ten year marriage, fourteen years together. Um, good sex life, good relationship. I mean, he convinced me to sell my underwear online. I mean, good relationship. But um, ultimately, our our marriage ended because in the lifestyle um, we were exclusive with a couple. And um, he was meeting that, that female outside of the four of us being together. Uh, so okay. in, my mind, in my mind, that's an affair and that's cheating. I'm letting you have sex with another woman in the same house as me, in the same room as me. What's the reason for meeting her for lunch, coffee, evening, stuff mm -hmm. like that, without me noticing? Uh -huh. And that's when 
that's when you get involved in this world and you screw things up with your partner, ultimately. Right, right. right. Go ahead, I'm sorry, Hannah. No, I've never been to like a, a sex club. I have been to the Bunny Ranch uh, about two years ago and they gave us a tour of it and showed us all the rooms. The girls were really nice. We got to go meet, they had um, a bunch of little horsies out in the back and they showed us their living quarters and all the girls seemed really happy. The only thing that bothered me because I have low self-esteem was even for us, when we walked in, they had all the girls line up and they wanted us to pick one of them to give them a tour and we felt so bad. We don't care, you give us a tour. You know, you're all beautiful. Yeah, I um, I actually worked at one of Dennis Hoff's location. I worked, it was called The Alien. The Alien. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, maybe after that, yeah. Um, yes. Where I, you were an escort for a while. Yes, yes. I went up there. I did uh, three different times up at the uh, at it, at the uh, alien in um, Area Fifty One, and I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of my book is actually on that because that was just such a you know opening experience for me. Um, but it is very it breaks your heart because you, you line up and you get some of the new girls, and when they don't get picked, you can hear people in their room crying, and it was you know it was heartbreaking. Really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, especially when you've been there, you know, because uh, we still have to pay to live there unless you make a certain amount. And so when there's girls that have been there three, four days and they have yet to have what's called a session, you know, your heart breaks. And so sometimes I would try to, you know, ask someone who chose me, do you want to double? And do you want me to bring in somebody, you know, to try and help that girl and also, you know, give them a new experience. But I think that's the hardest when, when you line up and you don't get picked. And you're not allowed to... Um, change your facial expressions. You know, you have to just be very nonchalant, all of us. Yeah. May I ask your opinion on Heidi Fleiss? I, 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 I give her credit. She, you know, was one of the first madams and she, she made a business for herself and I'm really sad of how- I mean, hardly, there just been madams since the 1700s, 1600s, the role of time. Prostitution has been around. That's why they call it the oldest profession. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was post marriage, I'm assuming, that you started to, uh, doing the escorting. Oh, know? yeah. Oh, yeah. That's way, way down the line. Yeah. So um, it was after the divorce to the directing to porn to stripping at a strip club mm -hmm. to working at the brothel, managing a strip club. It just kind of all came together. And uh, opening a swingers club happened in 2012. So somewhere. Before the porn was the swingers club. So I would assume that uh, your uh, figure skating helped you with the uh, dancing, I would imagine. You had a couple of moves that other women didn't. It did. It was very interesting. I was uh, never, ever, ever danced, ever, as, as a stripper, ever in my life. Um, I had a photographer that shot me down at a strip club down in San Diego, who my friend owned. And the photographer was saying, you know, climb on the pole, hang upside down. And I said, okay, wait a second. I've never done this before ever. And so the owner of the club brought in a dancer who would put me in position back away. They would take a picture and then come back in to catch me. And I was 35. And the owner of the club said to me, um, you should dance here. And that's how I started dancing. Well, hey, you're girls, hey, girls, body shop. Probably helped. Say that again. Yeah, see, I think it helped. Yeah, and yeah. performing, performing, and then I went and I took I took private lessons because I am um, I really felt at least for me if I was going to go there and I was going to dance, um, I didn't want to just stand on the pole and wiggle around. I wanted to actually perform. Yeah, yeah. I envy those girls. I if I had the body and the moves. I would definitely dance to my favorite music and make money and work out. Yeah, and it's, I, and it's really really it, hard. It's underestimated the strength that it takes to. Be oh, and the pole, boom, I see some of my girlfriends go down there and then they're eager and stitched up. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, never, I never got hurt. I, that's why you go down like Dumbo's Clown Room, but that was a whole different story. <laughs> yeah. We, we had her boy, her, so, so, so nobody misunderstands. Uh, Anna had her birthday party at Dumbo's Clown Room and uh, she got a little drunk. That's the only thing. She was not stripping. Oh, that's <laughs> that was, uh, that was fun. Anyway, so Carlin, so, jeez, uh, I mean, we're, we're barely scratching the surface. So the same wife, I, I, would it be fair to say that once you started directing porn and swinging that your sex drive, was it always high or is this something that just kicked into the overdrive? My sex drive was actually very low. I actually never had had an orgasm until I was about, I think I was 30 years old. Um, I was still- what? 
<laughs> yep. I was 33. I'm with you. What? There you go. There you go. Yeah. It's harder for what are these guys doing? <laughs> what are you guys doing? Not us. <laughs> I'm giving girls orgasms. You think you are? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're squirting. I know they are. <laughs> And by the way, you're a squirter. I know that. We're going to talk about that. I am a so there's so there's your example. I um I lost my virginity. I think at 18, and I squirted during losing my virginity. And first of all, didn't know what that was, but then realized that you know <laughs> time went on. But I thought that was an orgasm. So from 18 till 30, when I had sex, if I squirted, I figured that's an orgasm. Um, and it feels good, but it's not an orgasm. So I didn't figure it out until I was 30 years old uh, with my husband celebrating the success of the pantsy business in Las Vegas and uh, purchasing a toy from one of those oxygen bars, which was not supposed to be a toy for sex. <laughs> but why not? Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> oxygen bar is, uh, is, is that the bar that they give you oxygen? Yes. Uh, so in Vegas, you know, for your hangovers, they have these oxygen bars and you put right. this thing under your nose that. and then they put this thing on your head like that. And right. it's got a little thing, that vibrator thing for the vibrating of your head. Yeah. That I took that off and used it elsewhere. Ooh. <laughs> I would try. Yeah. It works. It works. Uh, very good for you. Yeah. That's, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm writing that down. <laughs> that, that goes that goes along with my ice trick thing, but um so uh so your 20 your teens and 20s sex life was in now you're in your 30s which is i mean it's not it's i guess it's a little unusual not to have an orgasm until you're 30 but 30s is when the sex you know they always say that that's the, the woman's sexual peak correct correct so you were peaking hannah's speaking right now uh, but uh, but you were peeking, and how and behind the camera now? I know you have a theatrical background. How frustrating is it to go from having a theatrical background to the limited budgets and the limited imagination of most porn scenes? Were so, there extravagant things you wanted to do? Um, honestly, I have to say, just going back on you know on my personal experiences, um. I'm very, very good at separating. And so that, it was, a, you know, it was a job. I got hired, I went, I shot the scene. Um, most of the time, if I gave input to the director, like what about this or what about that? Or even like on a photo shoot, if I say, where are we shooting? What's the backdrop? How about this color? They, they're pretty flexible with that. Um, I think that I get to use my theatrical degree and my creativity in my, in my swingers events and hosting my events and running my wedding company right. and stuff like that, so. But did you come up with some uh, creative blocking in the porn shoots or? <laughs> um, as a director, as a performer? Yeah, as a director. Oh, as a director, yes. As a director, I, I was constantly stopping the camera. I also worked the camera on that particular company that I worked for. So I would stop the camera and say, this view of your, you know why is not working for me. Let's turn, let's flip, let's put a hand. <laughs> so, right. You're putting those Bob Fosse touches on the, <laughs> on the mill scene. Uh, yeah. And by the way, Hannah, I don't know if you know this. I probably should have mentioned this earlier. Apparently, uh, Corlin has one of the most beautiful vaginas in the world because <laughs> it was a contest for the most beautiful <laughs> vagina. And, and I know you were leading. Did you win that? I was leading number one for like 16 weeks. Uh, and uh, then they only placed, uh, they only prized the first, second, and third. And um, I think I dropped to like 16th place. They found out that there was a lot of uh, companies that were, you know, rigging the, what do you call that? When your uh, IP address is tracked. Right. Yeah. But I held on to it for a long time. <laughs> That's, I, 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 I did a, a cursory background, you know, I did a little research and I <laughs> don't know if I really got a, a, a great view of it, but I got to, I'll have to do some more research after this, but uh, why is it so beautiful? What makes your vagina so beautiful? You know, I, I personally, and this is gonna maybe come back at me. I don't think that vaginas are pretty. I don't I'm, think penises are pretty. <laughs> I don't. But um, we have a disagreement. But okay. I then. know, but so when when I was you know doing porn, like uh, porn and directing or running, you know, so my swingers club and seeing pictures, I always heard guys around me say like, "Oh, that's an awful vagina," and look at that. And so I used to be like, "Well, is mine like that?" 
like, no, yours is pretty. Well, tell me why. So, um, I guess like they say, like, oh gosh, this is awful. Are we going there? <laughs> we're going. No, there. We're going there. Okay. So like, no big lips. Like they don't like. Right. The, 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 all yeah, the meat's got to be in the taco. But some people love that. You know, it's to each their own. Or they yeah. call it a sandwich. I've heard that before too. Yeah. And then there's the color thing, and yeah, I mean, there's the smell, and you know, a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of different things, but yeah, so the, the, the person who started that contest contacted, they reached out to me and said that they had started an initial voting, and I was um, suggested to them, and would I enter the contest? So that's how it all Who, who suggested you for the most beautiful vagina contest? probably some people that I worked with or fans because I was already in the industry at that time. Okay, all right, all right. And, and are your breasts real? Because they, th they seem like it. They are not real. No, I just have a really, really good doctor. They are over the, that's the kick, that's the key, over the muscle for any lady. They're really bouncy. Yeah. <laughs> but, and that's what I didn't think, I, I, they look real. They but do. then again, I was thinking figure skater figures. Right, right. So that Although, it was as a, as as a little girl, when I was 13 years old, I used to beg, 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 beg my mom to let me get a breast reduction because I felt that my boobs were too big for being a pair skater and balancing on top uh, of my partner. Um, but after you have kids and you breastfeed, things go down, and so they came back. <laughs> right. So we're in your mid-30s, and you're directing porn, right. and you're on a set one day, and somebody says, Corlin, you should be... You should be acting. You should be, you should be fucking on cameras, basically. Correct. Right. Correct. Right. And you were in your mid thirties, and uh, had you ever thought about it before? I mean, you were. No, I, I just. Mean, it seems like the incremental steps keep coming. Yeah, I mean, I had you know, I had done the pins, I'd done the custom videos, um, I had done the dancing. I was still dancing when I was directing, um, and. Uh, sometimes the thought crossed my head when I would film because as I told you I worked the camera and you know the, the the performer would come on set be there for an hour leave and get a check for like over a thousand dollars and I'd be there all day from 7 a.m in the morning until 6 p.m and a three-hour drive to and from LA and I'd get 300 dollars for the day so it crossed my mind to be like maybe I should cross over to their side but I thought that I was too old um but I wasn't and so I did it <laughs> no, you weren't especially with the burgeoning milk market. Yes. Because uh, you, uh, and, and what was, uh, what was the first, uh, the first uh, scene that you did? First scene that I ever did was Big Gulp Girls. Um, and that was actually for my eight, my, the uh, gentleman that owned my agency also ran like an online site. And so that was- Big Gulp Girls? Big Gulp Girls. <laughs> oh, Big Gulp Girls. Yes. Oh, it's a 7-Eleven kind of thing. Kind of, yeah. That was my first date. <laughs> How did 7-Eleven not sue them? I don't know. Like I said, no. I, if, if, if anybody is watching or listening that uh, is from 7-Eleven, don't uh, just ignore us. I don't big, big Gulp girls, so very nice. I don't think nice. the name Big Gulp. Unless you the Big Gulp, you know? It's completely... Well, I, I guess, uh, really yeah. Different. I mean, that, like, I'm holding the soda. They can't take that away from you. Yeah, it, yeah it, it's a different kind of gulp. But uh, do you like oral? Are you? Uh... I'm so. I do. I That's do. a no. That's a no. I'm you do not, a protest. I know. Well, my, even like my my uh, you know my profiles say like I'm not really a swallower. I'll do it if I have to, but not my thing. I'm known for squirting. I've heard that before. <laughs> I've gone out with girls who have told me that before, and uh, they weren't a swallower going in. They were a swallower going out. Depends. It depends what the guy eats. What's his yeah. diet like? Oh, yeah, really? on their skin too. Oh yeah. Ugh. Yes. Oh, really? So 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 the the pineapple rumor is true. It is. It really is. Vegetable fruit really is. Yeah. And if that's true, I would imagine Galaxy vs. Rays must uh, really make it taste great. I wonder. Well, maybe check that out. <laughs> <laughs> gonna give the ladies some energy there, Mark. They're gonna be like, I, uh, I, you can tell I'm full of energy. Um, <laughs> Uh, just just talking about this but uh but um and then one of your first scenes was with a legend the one that i've met nina hartley yes yes that was uh probably oh gosh maybe like one of my sixth or seventh scenes yeah it was with nina 
I don't have their filmography here, but I would assume so. Uh, and uh, and I, I met her. She's great. She's wonderful. She's amazing. She's she touched my back. She was, she was phenomenal. But uh, that's a whole other story. Yeah. I, was, I mean, that's got to be the most experienced porn star you've been with and somebody that was older than you. Yeah, so that's kind of a funny story. I, th I, I think that might be in my book. I'm not sure. But um, I was very good friends with Raquel Devine. And Raquel Devine was very good friends with Nina Hartley. And I got cast on that set, arrived on set, went in, and Nina looks at me and says, who are you and who cast you? This is a guilt movie. And I was just, like, in shock because I was just like, oh, my gosh, they're going to send me home. And um, so then I told her who I was, and she's like, wait a second. You're really good friends with Raquel Devine, aren't you? And I said, yes. And she says, Raquel told me to take care of you. Get in here. So, you know, thanks for Raquel. I stayed, but I had a blast on that. And um, I worked with Erica Lauren on that. So some big You had to get old age bank up? Was this a... Uh... No, no, they just kind of changed it a little bit. Like it was like a neighborhood book club and I was one of the newer moms on the block. Oh, so. okay. Yeah, and, and you were hanging out with all the grandmothers that people like to fuck. Oh, it's funny because they didn't even look like grandmas. I don't know. <laughs> it was great. I mean, it just, uh, uh, you know, but... Uh, I mean, if it wasn't, if, if I didn't know how old, you know, approximately how old she was, I would never guess. If I saw her on the street and I didn't know who she was, mm -hmm. I would think she was, in, you know, in her 30s, early 40s, maybe. Yeah, it was, a, it was a really fun scene. She's funny. She took out a bag of toys and, like, dumped them, and there was black rubber gloves in there, and we were like, what are those for? And she was just, like, so nonchalant. This is for fingering each other's assholes. And we were like, Okay. <laughs> You didn't know about the black rubber gloves? Everybody knows that. Oh, she's so funny. She had to wear your black rubber gloves. Come on. Oh, uh, you know, you see, I kind of stayed out of it. Because <laughs> you're not, you're, I guess you're not into the S and M scene that much either. Huh? Not so much. I mean, I'm I'm very familiar with it, and I've been involved in it, but it's not my thing. Although you 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 have said that you're a bit submissive. I am. You like a man to take charge. In the bedroom, yeah. So in the bedroom, I like to be dominated. But in the real world, it's because I'm such a strong woman and I, I've got my hands in so many different businesses that I can't be controlled in the real world. So well, in the world, real world, nobody, uh, why, who would want to? But behind closed doors in the bedroom, yeah. that's when you like your hair pulled, you like being told what to do, yep. you like you being on your hands and knees, a little spanky spanky, right? Yeah, yep. absolutely. Yeah. So I... Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and so you were, I, and if you go to all the free porn sites, which is what I do, uh, X videos and Pornhub and, and that, basically every one of your videos is you seducing a young, <laughs> uh, supposed to be a teenager, but obviously a man in his early 20s. Play the Mills role, that's correct. Yeah, you're always, you're, you're always a stepmother. I saw one last night where you're like, uh, your husband's like, bye, and you call call up a, a girlfriend, like, yeah, I, I've seen him coming out of the shower, and he uh, yeah, to have was, a nice dick. That was my, so I actually retired for three years, and that was my debut, debut. I came back with SCORE um, in February, right before COVID hit, and shot that. Right, why, why did you retire for three years? Um, I had a boyfriend, and I was focusing on my wedding company, and my, my fitness company, like trying to focus on other aspects of business. But um, ultimately realized that um, I'm not, I wasn't done yet. And so I decided I'm going to come back and I'm going to do what I want to do and finish my book. And then we'll see where I go from you're, here. You're an audio girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you were, but you were trying to get out and just be legitimate. Um, try more With than the swinging on the side. Yeah, more just, you know, do, I, was, I was still webcamming, still doing custom videos. Um, I was still running my swinging company, but really putting effort to my weddings, my fitness. Um, a relationship. I was really trying to be in a legit relationship, which didn't work. So, that was that the woman you almost married, or that is my best friend that I met in Sweden when I lived in Sweden. So I have now known her uh, uh, seventeen, almost seventeen years. Seventeen years I've known her. Um, so I call her my wifey. I mean, old, I, I, you know, I I would marry her in a heartbeat. They say that marriage is about being with someone that you can stand to be around 24 mm -hmm. hours a day. And I could be with her. We would go on vacations. We never get sick of each other. So. I have a wifey as well, I understand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, see, this is the thing. I don't understand why people get married at all. 
I agree. I agree. I don't think that you need to put a label or a paper, or, you know, a, a paper trail control on it, if that makes well, sense. Here's my thing on marriage. Um, I think it's like an insurance policy for somebody you love. So I own a home and my husband doesn't. And I pass away and say a family member I don't get along with legally gets it. I want to make sure he's going to be okay when I pass on. So I kind of think of it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it just the, um, I guess for me, more than anything with the marriage, I don't like to say this is my boyfriend. So mm -hmm. that word, this is my fiance. Yeah. You can be my fiance for the next 25 years. That's fine. But uh, for me personally, it's very difficult to date because it takes a real strong man to, um, to trust me and to know that um, I'm a businesswoman and business is business and pleasure is pleasure. And I'm very, very capable of separating the two. Right, right. Well, yeah, it would take a strong man. I mean, being a strong man myself, uh, I know, but I was going to say, <laughs> no, so, so, so after three years, you're back, you're on set, and uh, yeah, and you're uh, checking out your stepson's dick. Now, uh, <laughs> now, it, this we, we asked it for every, to everybody, but have there been any weird mishaps happen on the sets? Anything strange happened? Um, anything happened that shouldn't have happened? Uh, so again, that there's one story that's in my book, but in a nutshell is uh, we did three days filming of a movie, um, which happened to actually be at a swingers resort. And I was cast as the lead and the director at that time, I was really, really new. Um, and the director at that time didn't even know that I ran a swingers club. And so when he approached me and said, are you comfortable with the swinging world? I told him who I was and he was like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. So we did three days on set and really the rule is once you're tested, you know, you don't sleep with direct, you don't sleep with random people, uh, extras on the set or people yeah. that are working or camera people, you just don't. And um, long story short, my pretend husband uh, couldn't perform. And um, so come to find out he had slept with an extra without a condom. And then my director wanted me to try to get him to perform back in LA the next day. And I had to convince my director ultimately that I wanted to wait for us to both retest before shooting the scene. Oh, wow. So, and, and the director, I know we're still very good friends. I know he's probably read my book by now and he's going, oh my gosh, that really happened. Cause I didn't tell him I was brand new. So I didn't know who to tell or who to go to, to say, listen, I'm scared to do this scene with my partner because he stepped out and, and had sex without a condom, you know? So that would, I say, maybe not the strangest, but a no. very, uh, a very eye opener for me being brand new to the industry, you know, as to which way am I supposed to handle that, you know? Well, you handle it the right way. And I, <laughs> what I understand from other uh, adult film stars that I've talked to, uh, that should be respected. And uh, I did the director respect that. Um, so we never told him. So he's probably read it in my book. What happened was I asked another male performer who's been in the industry a long time. I said, help me. This is what I know happened this morning. And they want me to shoot a scene tonight when we get back to LA. How do I tell the director that I'm scared to do that? And he said, I'll handle it for you. And so he pretty much just said to the director, listen, why don't you know, we've been shooting for three days straight. There's a lot of pressure on this male performer. Why don't we all go back to LA and then in two weeks retest and bring her back to shoot with him? Let's, uh, let's give Limp Dick some time to recover and <laughs> time to get tested. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> who, who, I don't know who couldn't get hard for you and I don't know what the hell he was doing with this. And it wasn't even me. It was just, he's brand new, first scene ever. None of us girls could, there was four girls, four guys, and none of us could get it working. <laughs> ah, one of those things. And, yeah. and, and now, since you are in the swinger lifestyle, are there things that you, are there things sexually that you tried in porn that you haven't tried in real life or vice versa? Uh, Actually, so recently, um, I had a date with someone. I wonder if he'll hear this and kill me. So let's see. I had a date with someone, and um, he proceeded to tell me that he was bi. And I said that was fine. I didn't judge. And so he came out to one of my events with me, and we ended up being intimate together. And then he asked me to go out and find a cock, were his exact words. And so I did. 
And I came back into the room and I told him that I'd never done this before. I'd never been with a man that was bisexual and I didn't know how I was going to handle it. If I was going to enjoy it or not like it, or if I was going to, you know, walk out of the room or be involved. And um, I had my had my experience with that and him and I liked it. And that was something that I've never done in the adult industry. And that actually proceeded on to um, a gentleman that was, uh, he claimed to be, and, I'm, and I know he is, 100% gay, agreed to be with me and that partner, um, but said he wouldn't be intimate with me. And the next night, he was having sex with me after 27 years of never being with a woman. Well, first off, that, uh, <laughs> first off, I got to say, happy bye day to everybody, because it is happy bye day. Oh, oh is it? Happy bye oh, day. Oh, happy bye day. It's a happy bisexual day. I, it's some some name for it. I'm not sure, but it's, it's bisexual day. But you just you just describe Hannah's dream. I just describe what? Hannah's dream. She gets to hang out with a couple gay guys and have sex. Oh, that's, well, that's a dream. And, and I, I got to tell you, and he already knows this. Um, that man was probably some of the best sex that I've had in a long, long time. The one that was gay. Oh. I've been gay, but he's never been with a woman in 27 years. You know, I do have some gay um, male friends that have said they wanted to be with me multiple times. Like, I've never been with a girl, but you're the girl I want to be with. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're going to keep this as friends. <laughs> and Corlin's saying, do it. Because, yeah. A lot, a lot of anal, or what's going on? What, what happens there? What, oh, do I love anal? No, no. The, the, when, you're with, when you're with the gay guy, is, is it a lot of anal? or No. So the gay guy didn't want to do anal with me, which is the interesting part. Because I thought yeah. that, because well, I'm thinking like they would, they're used to right. so the he asshole. Wanted, he wanted and to try something different. And I asked him, like, does it still feel good? And he said, yeah. And I said, does it, you know, feel the same? And he said he liked it. But then I squirted. And then he kind of like paused and he goes, that was squirt, huh? And I go, yeah. And he goes, Still gay. <laughs> that was sensational. You didn't know about the towel or any of that? Oh, yeah, no, we had one, and I warned him, and he said it was fine, but I don't think that he really knew what what was about to happen. Oh. So. Yes. Well, you do have the 14th best-looking vagina in the world, so right? the gay guy can recognize that. <laughs> and, uh, geez, where does the time go? It's it's already been an hour. I. We've barely scratched the surface. We definitely want to talk to you again. Yes, I, we I think do. Hannah agrees. Yes. Well, thank you for having me. And we definitely want to get your book. Tell us about your book. Tell us about your swingers parties. Tell us everything that you can do for us, uh, adult-wise and non-adult-wise. Okay, so let's see. To shorten it, my book and um, the links to my book and everything. My book is called, and I have it here. So I know you said you have some YouTube things. So that's what the book looks like. It was uh, released in June. It's a number one international bestseller. Okay, it's uh, When the Ice Melts, the story of Coral and Jewel. Um, and it can be found on my website, which is Coralyn, C-O-R-A-L-Y-N, Jewel, J-E-W-E-L.com. Not, not Carol and Jewel, because that's another one. Uh, Carolyn, yes. So everybody does that. So Coral, so C-O-R-A-L, and then the Y-N. Um, and then for my swinger events, um, I have a website and I think that everything pretty much, if you go to my Coral and Jewel, you can find information on my, my lifestyle company that I started in 2012, which is now 18,000 members coaching. I do zoom online coaching for people that are either interested in getting involved in the lifestyle, but want some guidance or if they're already in it, couples, males, females, single, um, just wanting to know how to go about uh, getting the most of their experience in the lifestyle. Um, and that's all on my website, kind of combined everything into one. Well, as usual, we wrap it up and I have one more question that I was, forgot to get to before. Okay. And, <laughs> and Hannah might have another one too. I, we'll, we'll, I, know, I know you took, I took the camera up and you're ready to go, but you're probably interested in this. In the age of COVID, how are you able to have, still have swingers events? So right now we really are not because of what's going on. Um, we do have, like if there's a hotel that has, let's say 20 rooms on the property, you're allowed to have 20, you know, or guests staying in those rooms. So then you can have like a little smaller event at the pool and just hanging out but it's definitely not what I'm used to doing. I'm used to bringing in caterers and fire, fire eaters and sword swallowers. I bring in models. I bring in uh, burlesque dancers. 
we have playrooms, vendors, and everything's kind of on a halt right now. So people aren't swinging on Zoom, are they? Ooh. They probably are. They are. I mean, we actually, we were doing virtual parties, like, online, yeah. um, especially in the way beginning. So on a Friday night, we would say, you know, get dressed up in your sexiest lingerie, and, you know, we'd all jump in on a big, huge virtual party on another website that I'm part owner in. Um, um, and then that kind of, it gets boring, though, you know? But we're doing the best we can. It's giving me a chance to really focus. I'm already working on writing my second book because uh, there's so much in this book that I didn't get to put in there. And I always say like, oh, I forgot to put that in and oh, I forgot to share that story. So it gives me a chance to work on that. You are a fascinating woman. There's a you lot are. to you. Uh, you know. Go to CorallineJewel.com. Not Carolyn Jewel. Corallin Jewel. C-O-R-A-L-Y-N-J-E-W-E-L. And, uh, and you could pick anything you want. There's all sorts of avenues you can go. It's like a, it's like a picket adventure. You can go to the porn, you can go to the swingers, you can go to the liquor skating, wherever you want. And yeah. Hannah, go to uh, hail hannahbot 666 on Instagram. And mm -hmm. also, uh, briefly, uh, your, your, uh, your podcast, uh, Vegans Uncensored. Yeah, which I'm about to record here in the next 20 minutes. Oh, cool. oh no wonder That's you why my to phone... get off of your real no, podcast my... is just about to say. No, because my phone was about to die, so I had to take the camera off and plug you guys in. <laughs> so And check out Vegans Uncensored and tell, tell Mary to die. I will. And, and uh, Goth Comedian, also social media, everybody, have a wonderfully creepy week. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.